What if I told you the reason you can't control your emotions isn't your fault, but your brain's wiring? Because the truth is emotional reactions are not just habits. They're hardwired responses created deep inside your brain, long before you ever learn to speak. And unless you know how to rewire them, they'll keep running the show, making you say things you regret, feel what you don't want to feel, and miss out on the calm, control, and clarity you actually deserve. But here's the twist. Science has finally caught up. And what used to take years of meditation or therapy can now begin to shift in just minutes using simple neuroscience-based tools. No fluff, no guessing. Just raw, proven methods to reset how your brain handles stress, anger, sadness, or anxiety. In this video, you're going to discover how to master your emotions using the latest discoveries in neuroscience. You'll learn why naming your emotions out loud can instantly calm your brain. Why the words you choose, like saying irritated instead of just mad, can make a massive difference in how much control you have. You'll uncover how a 60-second reframe can turn emotional chaos into inner peace, and how the rhythm of your breath holds the secret to turning off the brain's panic button. And that's not all. We'll also explore the quiet power of mindfulness, how it actually reshapes the structure of your brain, and give you a glimpse into emerging tools like neurofeedback that let you train your emotional responses in real time. These are not tricks. These are scientific breakthroughs. Some so recent, most people have never even heard of them. But once you apply them, your emotional world can start to shift in ways that feel almost so if you're tired of being hijacked by feelings that make no sense, or if you're ready to finally break free from emotional patterns that hold you back, keep watching. Because by the end of this video, you'll have a toolbox that can transform your inner world, one calm decision at a time. Welcome to NeuroShift Frequency, your home for mastering the mind with real science and deep wisdom. Don't forget to subscribe for more powerful insights that shift your reality starting from within. Most people try to push their emotions away. They ignore them, suppress them, or pretend they don't exist. But neuroscience tells a different story. The fastest way to take the power out of an overwhelming emotion isn't to fight it, it's to name it. This is called effect labeling. It's the simple act of saying I feel anxious or I'm feeling frustrated. It may sound too easy to matter, but this small step changes everything. When you name your feeling, something remarkable happens inside your brain. The emotional center, called the amygdala, starts to calm down. Blood flow begins to shift from the panic areas of the brain to the areas responsible for logic and reasoning. You're not just describing what you feel, you're interrupting the emotional loop. Scientists have watched this in brain scans. The moment someone labels their emotion, activity in the amygdala drops almost instantly. It's like flipping a switch. Instead of being trapped in a storm of reaction, your brain starts to process the emotion more calmly. You shift from chaos to clarity, all because you named the feeling. It works even better when you speak the emotion out loud or write it down saying I feel overwhelmed, or jotting down in a notebook, I'm feeling tense and irritated, gives your brain a target. It moves the emotion from raw reaction into a space where you can begin to think clearly. You don't have to fix anything in that moment. You just have to name it. This is not about positive thinking or pushing emotions aside. It's about acknowledging what's real. And when you do, your brain responds. It doesn't fight back. It breathes. Even when the emotion feels too big to handle, Try pausing and quietly naming it. That moment of awareness creates a pause between what you feel and how you respond. And in that pause, you regain your power. Let the feeling be seen, and then watch how fast it starts to loosen its grip. Most people describe their emotions with vague words. They say they feel bad, off, or upset. But those words don't give the brain much to work with. They're like trying to navigate with a blurry map. Emotional granularity changes that. It's the ability to name your emotions with precision, like saying disappointed, overwhelmed, or resentful, instead of just sad or angry. When you're specific, something powerful happens. The brain begins to categorize the emotion accurately. And when your brain knows exactly what it's dealing with, it becomes easier to regulate it. You gain more control. Instead of reacting automatically, snapping, withdrawing, or spiraling, you create space to choose how you want to respond. Think of it like using a thermometer. If you just say it's hot, that doesn't tell you much. But if you say it's exactly 102 degrees, now you know what action to take. Emotions work the same way. 
The more precise your language, the more precise your brain's response. This level of clarity can prevent emotional buildup. It helps you understand the layers beneath your reactions. For example, instead of saying you're mad, you might realize you're actually feeling ignored or unimportant. That shift in awareness gives you a different path forward. It softens the reaction and makes room for solutions. To build this skill, start by keeping a short list of emotion words, not long or complicated, just 10 to 15 precise feelings. Use it to check in with yourself once or twice a day. Ask, what exactly am I feeling right now? Then scan the list and choose the one that fits best. Even this small practice begins to rewire how your brain handles emotional input. It trains your mind to be curious instead of reactive. It shifts you from automatic patterns into conscious awareness. And over time, your emotional vocabulary becomes a powerful tool, not just for expressing how you feel, but for managing what you feel. The more specific you get, the more stable you become. Because the brain doesn't just feel, it understands. Not every emotion comes from what actually happened. Often it comes from how we interpret what happened. That's where cognitive reappraisal becomes a powerful tool. It means looking at the same situation through a different lens, changing your perspective on the trigger. When you reframe a situation, your brain shifts. Instead of the amygdala firing off an emotional surge, the prefrontal cortex steps in. This is the part of the brain responsible for reasoning, decision-making, and self-control. As it takes over, emotional intensity drops. You regain mental space to respond instead of react. Imagine you get a text from someone and they sound cold or distant. Your first reaction might be hurt or anger, but if you pause and reframe, maybe they're tired, maybe they're dealing with something hard, your emotional state softens. You stop spinning stories that build tension and replace them with possibilities that ease your mind. You can practice this with a quick exercise. When something triggers you, ask yourself, is there another way to see this? Then find at least one positive or neutral interpretation. Even if it's not fully true, your brain will respond to the shift. The emotional grip loosens. The story changes. And so does your reaction. This is how emotional mastery begins. Not by changing the world around you, but by changing the meaning you give to it. Alongside reappraisal, there's another method that works even deeper. It's called mindfulness. It trains your brain to stay calm in the middle of chaos. Mindfulness isn't about zoning out. It's about zoning in. It brings you into the present moment with full awareness. Science shows that regular mindfulness practice reduces reactivity in the amygdala. It also increases gray matter in areas tied to focus, empathy, and self-regulation. Your brain becomes more flexible, less impulsive, and more stable over time. You don't need hours of practice. Just five minutes a day can make a real difference. Sit quietly, close your eyes, and follow your breath. Or try loving-kindness meditation. Silently repeat phrases like, May I be calm. May I be safe. May I feel peace. Let these words soften your mind and body. These practices don't remove emotions. They help you stay with them, breathe through them, and choose how to respond. Over time, your brain learns to live in balance, not reaction. And with that, you start to lead your emotions, not follow them. When emotions hit hard, your breath is the fastest tool you have to shift your state. Breathwork isn't just about calming down. It's a direct line to your nervous system. The way you breathe can either fuel stress or shut it down. And the best part? You control it. Intentional breathing patterns send signals straight to the emotional centers of the brain. They tell your system, you're safe, you're okay, you're in control. This message instantly reduces activity in the amygdala, slowing your heart rate, relaxing your muscles, and grounding your mind. One of the most effective techniques is the 478 breath. It's simple, but powerful. You inhale for 4 seconds, hold your breath for 7 seconds, then exhale slowly for 8 seconds. This pattern triggers the parasympathetic nervous system, the part of you responsible for rest and recovery. Within seconds, your body begins to unwind, tension fades, clarity returns. Try it right now. Inhale slowly through your nose. One, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now exhale gently. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do it again if you need to. Each round takes less than 20 seconds, but the effect is deep. You're creating space between the emotion and your reaction. You're signaling your brain that the emergency is over. This technique works especially well during anxiety, anger, or overwhelm. It also prepares your body for sleep, focus, or deep thinking. It's a reset button you can press anytime, anywhere. No tools, no noise, just breath. And each time you use it, you strengthen your ability to regulate emotions naturally. Make breath your anchor. It's always there waiting to guide you back to balance. When the mind races, let the breath lead. One inhale, one exhale, one calm moment at a time. There's a new way to master your emotions, and it doesn't rely on guessing how you feel. It uses data from your own brain. This is where neurofeedback comes in. It's a method that lets you see your brain activity in real time, then train it like a muscle. Neurofeedback works by measuring your brain waves through a simple device like an EEG headband. 
These waves change depending on your state, focused, calm, anxious, or distracted. With the right tools, you can watch these patterns on a screen while you meditate, focus, or breathe. And the system responds to you offering sounds, visuals, or rewards when your brain enters a more balanced state. It's like holding a mirror up to your mind. When you can see what's happening inside, you can start to guide it. Over time, this training helps you move away from reactive patterns and build new ones that support calm, clarity, and control. What once required a lab or clinic is now available at home. There are affordable apps and wearable devices that offer simple forms of biofeedback. Some track heart rate variability, others monitor brainwave shifts. All of them help you become more aware of your internal state and give you tools to change it. You don't need to be a scientist to use them. These tools are designed to be simple, interactive, and intuitive. The more you use them, the better your brain gets at shifting into emotional balance on its own. It's like mental fitness, but instead of lifting weights, you're building resilience, focus, and emotional strength. Start small. Even just a few minutes a day with a neurofeedback app can improve your mood, increase focus, and lower stress over time. You're not just calming the surface, you're reshaping the way your brain reacts to the world around you. And the more feedback you get, the faster your mind learns. Emotional mastery doesn't happen by accident. It's a practice, a simple, repeatable rhythm you can follow every day. Start by labeling the emotion, then reframe the trigger. Use breath to calm your body, meditate to center your mind, and track your patterns over time to train your brain. Picture this, you're feeling anxious before an important meeting, your chest is tight, thoughts are racing. First pause and name it, I feel anxious. You've just interrupted the emotional spike, now reappraise. Ask yourself, is this fear or is it excitement? Is this pressure or preparation? Suddenly the emotion starts to shift. Next, close your eyes and breathe. Inhale for 4 seconds, hold for 7, exhale for 8. With each breath your nervous system calms, your mind clears. Then take just 5 minutes for mindfulness. Sit still, focus on your breath, let thoughts pass without judgment. You're not pushing the anxiety away, you're observing it, letting it lose its grip. Finally, if you have a neurofeedback app or a journal, take a moment to track how you feel. What triggered the reaction? What worked to shift it? Over time, these small notes help you see patterns. You begin to recognize what strengthens your emotional balance and what drains it. This routine doesn't take hours. It can be done in 10 minutes or less, but the impact grows fast. Labeling sharpens awareness. Reappraisal builds flexibility. Breathwork calms your body. Meditation trains your focus. And tracking turns experience into growth. These tools become habits. Habits become your new baseline. And that baseline shapes how you handle life, calm, steady, and strong. You've just learned five powerful tools backed by neuroscience, affect labeling, emotional granularity, cognitive reappraisal, breathwork, and neurofeedback. Each one gives you more control over your emotions, more clarity in your thoughts, and more peace in your everyday life. But knowing isn't enough. These tools only work if you use them. So take a moment now, pick one. Will you start labeling your feelings? Will you try the 478 breath? Or maybe download a neurofeedback app? Drop a comment below and tell us which tool you're going to try first. If this video gave you something valuable, show it some love. Like the video, subscribe to our channel Neuroshift Frequency, and tap the bell so you never miss a moment of transformation. This is your time. Take the science, make it a habit, and master your emotions, one conscious step at a time.